Hello Retro Gaming Maniacs and, and welcome to Retro Raider Japan's first YouTube video. This first video is a tutorial on a new much easier and faster method of replacing a drive belt on a Famicom disk system. Unlike all the other tutorials out there, there's no need to remove the four springs inside the drive, as we're not going to mess with the spindle too much. If you overstretch or lose one of those springs, it's close to impossible to cheaply find replacements of the exact same size and tension. There's no fine tuning needed either, as we align the spindle accurately while we reassemble the unit. There's no excessive disassembly needed either. Some tutorials out there show the whole drive being disassembled, and to be honest, unless there's another problem with the hardware, I think this is pretty time consuming and unnecessary. So, let's get started. I bought this FDS from a Kanteda and used goods warehouse last summer, and this is the first time I'm trying it out but I can pretty much guarantee that the belt is going to be broken. Well, it powers up at least. I'm using a refurbished AV out Famicom that I modded myself. You can see the AV cables on the right hand side there. The FDS is telling me to put in a disc, so let's do that right now and see what happens. Well, the motor's spinning, but I can't hear the heads moving. No, nothing happening. No, nothing at all. I can safely say the belt's perished. So here are all the tools you'll need to get your FDS back up and running. Some moist towels for your fingers and cleaning the pulley. Some alcohol to clean the pulley wheels inside the drive. A 1.5mm hex head Allen key with a long handle. The longer the better. Plenty of cotton swabs, cotton buds, whatever you want to call them. A replacement drive belt. I can send you one for $5, free shipping. Check the description for more info. And a Phillips head screwdriver. You might also need a finer Phillips head screwdriver and maybe a pair of long nose pliers if the drive connects where it's hard to remove. So, grab your screwdriver and let's open up the FDS. We have to first remove the six screws on the bottom of the unit. You can already see bits of broken belt inside the case. Next step is to remove the four screws holding the drive in place. Let's carefully slide off the plastic front panel, being careful of the LED wires attached to it and carefully place it to one side of the drive. Watch those wires. We also have to take the battery compartment off, so we remove the two screws holding it on. So that's the four screws holding the drive in and the two screws holding the battery compartment. Lift up the drive a little and detach the cable connector at the back. And lift out the drive unit. As these things are pretty old, sometimes the drive can be stuck on the rubber pads, so you might need to pry the metal feet from the pads. Next we open up the drive unit. There's four screws here, but we only need to remove three. So remove that one, that one, and that one, but not that one. This one closest to the connector is more deeply set. Ignore this for now. Now we can remove the base plate. And there's more bits of broken belt inside and some stuck on the white pulley wheel and some stuck on the motor pulley as expected. Now 
Next we remove the four circuit board screws. There's three different types found here. Just remember where each one goes. The first screw is the same as the screw diagonally opposite. This screw nearest the connector has a small washer on it. The rest don't. Sorry about the blurry camera. This screw closest to the pulley plate is flatter and smaller than the rest. You might need that smaller screwdriver for this. Now, don't lift the circuit board off yet. There's three hooks on the drive case holding various cables down. We have to loosen the cables first. Just gently pry up the one nearest the motor and gently ease out the yellow wires from under it. Then at the back, unhook the motor wires. Then, finally do the same on the hook holding down the black cable that leads into the black plastic casing. Now all the cables are loose, gently pull the circuit board up and away from the pulley plate. Probably best just to watch the video and rewind before trying this. Just be very gentle and watch those wires at the back. Keeping the circuit board lifted away, we now need to remove the spindle plate by removing these three screws. Here's another part you might want to watch a few times before trying it. Holding the drive with the eject button facing upwards, pull the spindle plate gently and rotate the plate clockwise. That sound you just heard is the drive mechanism sliding back, now the cog is not holding it in. That's okay, it's supposed to happen. Now you've rotated it about 10 degrees, Pull a little more and slide the plate down and to the left while turning it further clockwise. Keep sliding and it will finally come free. Now we can see all the gooey perished rubber stuck on the pulleys. So get your swabs, wipes and alcohol, put on some music Take your time and clean those pulleys.
With alcohol on the swab, just wipe the pulley with a little bit of force and you'll see the rubber coming off. Just keep wiping and cleaning. It does take a while depending on how much rubber is stuck on the white plastic and brass pulleys. Once you're done, take a break and get ready to put the new belt on. This time it took about 10 swabs to clean the plastic pulley. Finally, cleaning up the pulley with a damp wipe, we can move on to the metal pulley. Okay, now we're done, let's put our new belt on. It's hard to explain the easiest method of getting the belt in position on the plate, so take a look at this a few times. I've tried to make it as clear as possible. With the thinnest end of the plate facing up, place the left leg of the plate inside the belt. Pull the belt under the plate, but above the large plastic cog. Pull the belt back over the top of the plate and hold the belt in place with a small amount of sticky tape. Let's break it down with some diagrams so you can get it right the first time. Left leg in the belt loop. Pull the belt under the plate so it's in between the plate and the cog. Bring the belt back over the plate. Bring the sides of the belt together in the center of the plate. Then secure with tape. Okay, here's where things get a little different from the other tutorials that you've seen. Place the plate over the spindle and rotate the white metal pulley so the largest plastic hole on the pulley lines up with the large hole on the plate. You don't have to reattach the plate, just place it above and line the two holes up so it looks like this. Keeping the circuit board carefully out of the way while keeping the pulley in the position that you've just rotated it to, place the plate next to the pulley in this position. Slide the plate to the right while gradually rotating it anti-clockwise. Lift the plate a little when you get resistance from the spindle so the plate goes over. Keep rotating anti-clockwise until the center hole is on the spindle and push the plate so that the legs match the small indentations on the casing so it sits securely in place. Don't worry too much if the large hole is rotated out of place by a few millimetres, it should be okay, but do try to keep it as lined as best you can. Once the plate is in place, the mechanism is locked and aligned in place 
so the position of the large hole on the plastic spindle can now rotate wherever it wants. Now we can remove the tape and put the belt where it should be. Pull the belt free if it's caught between anything on the area around the plate. Pull the belt up around the area where the large hole is on the plate and make sure the belt is around the spindle in the uppermost groove above the black plastic ring on the pulley. Holding this rightmost part of the belt in place on that groove, we can now pull the belt across to the metal pulley. Just make sure that the belt doesn't slip off. And the belt is now in place and should look exactly like this. Don't rotate the pulleys until you have your circuit board back in place, as there is nothing to stop the belt sliding off the pulley until that's screwed back down. This next step is a little bit fiddly as we put the circuit board back in place. We have to push this black plastic switch through a hole in the casing, so you will need a screwdriver to help with this. Push the switch in as you close the circuit board over the belt and make sure it goes through the square hole and make sure the circuit board screw holes are aligned to the metal casing. Holding the circuit board firmly in place with your hand, turn the unit over and pry the black switch outwards slightly so it is not caught on the metal casing and moves back and forth freely. Turn the drive back over and bolt down the spindle plate and put the screws back in the circuit board. The screw with the flattest head goes here. The two screws without a washer go here.
and the one with a washer goes here. Now that's all secure, we remove the front panel of the drive by removing these two screws. And we can resecure all the wires back under their respective hooks. Now we can align the spindle. Again, this part is different from the other tutorials out there. What we have to do now is position the metal piece on the drive spindle that rotates the disc. But first let's see what happens with some discs. You can skip this part as it will just demonstrate that the drive is totally misaligned and won't load discs yet. As you can see, nothing's loading, so we can now correctly align the spindle piece without any need for fine tuning for badly written discs. Using your thumb, rotate the large plastic cog underneath, clockwise until the flat end of the spindle piece is facing towards you so you can see the tiny socket screw. Using the long end of the hex head allen key, turn the tiny screw anti-clockwise very slightly so the spindle piece is very slightly loose, but not so loose as it slides off the spindle. Slowly turn the drive unit on its side, not upside down or the metal spindle piece might fall off, and rotate the large plastic pulley until the plastic hole reaches this position. 
The hull should line up with the metal strip as seen on this photo. Keeping the pulley in that position, turn the unit upright again and push the loose metal spindle piece around so that it is facing exactly forward and facing you through the disc slot. Make sure the metal piece is as low as possible on the spindle and tighten the tiny hex screw and you're all set. Two of the discs I'm using to test wouldn't load at all using the other tutorials and would literally take hours of tweaking the rotation of the spindle piece to get them to load. This rewritten mahjong disc is one of the problem discs that I have. Oh, and always make sure you have the plastic drive slot in place whilst trying the game out. It makes sure the disc sits properly in the drive. Okay, that works. Okay, let's try Zelda. Ducky Ducky Panic. Okay, that seems good enough. Okay, let's get it back together. People with large collections of discs and have problems using the old method. So let's do a final proof of concept of this new method with my entire disc collection. If you need a replacement belt, just send me a private message and I can mail you one for $5, free shipping. Or you can visit my little web shop, where you can buy sensibly priced retro gaming goods, everything shipped free. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out the Retro Raider Japan blog. We have a full map of all the Kanteidon warehouses in Japan and honest articles about buying retro gear over here. Again, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.